Dear participants and colleagues, we will now advise on how to select the best parent palm within a population for breeding purposes. We will first present the history of the coconut diversity in the Pacific region. Indeed, this history is very important to understand the local history of coconut populations and how their genetic diversity was created, because the choice of the best selection method to apply depends on this history. Then, we will describe three variants of what scientists are calling the mass selection breeding method within a population. Without naming it, farmers have been using some variation of this method for millennia. We will then explain some tips and some way to collect, analyze useful data in order to improve breeding efficiency. We will finish by explaining what is a hybrid and why the mass selection method is almost useless when applied to F1 hybrids and to homogeneous dwarfs. Here is a representation about the history of the coconut palm in the Pacific region during the last 300 years. We will use the example of a classic landscape from Pacific region, made up of a coast and some small islands. The circular dots represent coconut palms. The different colors represent different varieties of coconut palms. Around 1800s, so more than 200 years ago, Islanders' families had each a limited number of coconut palms, but there existed many coconut land races serving widely differing purposes. Between 1800 and 1930, coconut and copra became a huge colonial business. The number of coconut palms in the Pacific region was multiplied by 60 to 100 times. During this period, in many islands, the population was decimated by diseases imported by Europeans, such as measles. Let's imagine living in a village, with no book and no computer. More than 90% of the villagers die within a short period. How much traditional knowledge will survive? Coconut land races created over millennia by the Pacific Islanders were progressively diluted in the mass of coconut palms selected to produce copra. We estimate that at least 50% of the coconut varieties created by Pacific Islanders, over centuries, are already lost. The extent of loss for traditional agricultural knowledge is certainly much higher. Then after the 1930s, copra production gradually lost its economic importance. The number of coconut palms has also gradually decreased. This representation corresponds to the situation at the end of the 20 stone century. On this last image, we see the situation to which we wish to reach. Certain locations such as small islands or isolated valleys could be used both to maintain diversity and to produce seed nuts of traditional and hybrid varieties. The majority of world coconut palm is derived from mass selection, informally done by all growers. At the end of the 19th century, large plantations have been established by importation of fruits from a region known for its production. In most cases, the seed nuts were selected according to their specific characteristics. For instance, some preferred large and heavy fruits, others medium-sized fruits preferably round-shaped. The idea of a choosing the best trees within the best plots began to be applied first by farmers, from beginning of coconut cultivation, and second by scientists and breeders in the beginning of the 20th century. Then, all the research experimental stations involved with coconut breeding have used the mass selection system. From the breeder's point of view, there are three variants of mass selection, based on the reproductive system used, mass selection using open pollination, selfing or intercrossing. Mass selection using open pollination has been practiced the most. The seed nuts are collected from the palms that present attractive characteristics at a certain time or over a period. The progenies resulting from open pollination give an improved population. This method was evaluated by scientists. It leads to variable results. It even led to disputes and controversy between scientists, who found different results depending on the country and according to the observation seasons. But even in the best case, its effectiveness remained quite limited, generating a yield improvement of only 14% per generation on the copra yield. To obtain a progress of 14%, it was necessary to observe the mother trees patiently for four years, 
to count their fruits and to estimate the quantity of copra per fruit. Then only 5%, that is to say one coconut tree out of 20, were selected as parents to obtain this progress of 14% on the descendants, in about 15 years. In short, a lot of work for an unencouraging result. Many people, and especially agricultural officers, proceed like this. They go to a plantation, they look at the coconut trees only once, instead of observing them meticulously for four years, and they select one coconut tree out of ten instead of one in twenty coconut trees, then it is very likely that their selection will have a reduced effectiveness. It will be just conservative, with practically zero genetic progress. We have seen that a coconut tree can be loaded with fruit one year and empty the next. This reduces the effectiveness of unique observations. The situation will be different if selection is made by a farmer, or his employees, who live on the plantation. Having harvested the coconut trees for years, they really know which are the best trees. But even so, don't expect miracles. We choose the mother, but we do not choose the father. Remember the example of Emile Juventon who, on the Aratika Atoll, planted 80 progenies of the same tree, to obtain only one palm reproducing the parental traits. As we already seen, the study on efficiency of mass selection method using open pollination is characterized by several divergent results. From 1960 to 1990, this point was the main scientific controversy in the coconut research community. These divergent results may find their origin in the reproductive biology of the tall type varieties. Although the latter are preferentially allogamous, there is the possibility of natural selfing. The rate of selfing increases with the rhythm of inflorescence emission and bunch production. This rhythm depends on the individual vigor of the palm and on climatic conditions. When selecting good performing palms in the best plots, one may select palms with a higher tendency for selfing. Consequently, their progeny suffers from an inbreeding depression resulting in lower productivity. The rhythm of inflorescence emission also strongly varies with seasons and so do the selfing rate. For instance, in certain countries, the rate of selfing can be almost zero in January, and more than 30% in May. So, if you want to select for increasing yield, and if you know well your coconut palm, harvest your seedlings at the time where inflorescences do not overlap, when the selfing rate is low. However, there are a few options to improve the effectiveness of mass selection for coconut. The first is quite radical, but it can give good results. You have to accept losing a little in order to gain a lot more in the future. We have seen that when we harvest a seed, we know its mother, but we do not know its father. Chance plays. If the father is not good, the offspring will not be good. The selection therefore consists in eliminating all the bad fathers from the plantation. It is therefore necessary to cut a third or half of the coconut trees to keep only the good ones. Then the crossings will only occur naturally between good coconut palms, and the seeds will be better. Be careful, however, that after cutting the bad trees, you have to wait a year to harvest seeds that result from crosses between only the good trees. On Cook Island, I had the chance to talk with a very wise old planter who taught me how, from the start, he planted twice as many coconut trees as needed. Then, he had a special way of detecting the coconut trees that will become good, and the coconut trees that will remain low producers. He quickly cut down the low-yielding coconut trees, leaving only the good ones. Another option is to well select on the fruit characteristics, which are more heritable. Many farmers tend to select the biggest fruits. They are wrong. The most important is not to select on the size of the fruit. If you select the biggest fruits, you will obtain palms producing a low number of large fruits, with a low yield. It is much better to select instead fruits with a good composition, with a thin husk and a thick kernel. When you select only big fruits, the coconut tree gets tired of producing fruits with a lot of husk, and it produces only a little number of fruits. You should use the tip of a small knife to select seed nuts that have a fine husk. Mass selection using intercrossing appears more effective, 
as it allows for a strict selection of pollinators while retaining the potential for large seed nut production. However, there is no experimental result to assess the genetic progress that could be realized. This method consists of artificially crossing chosen female and male parents. It is therefore necessary to use controlled pollination technique with bagging. The technique used by scientists is complicated and expensive. During the field sessions, we will try to develop some techniques that can be used by farmers. We will bag a complete inflorescence, a single spikelet, and individually a single female flower with different types of bags. We will add, in these bags, male flowers or fragments of spikelets with make flowers which will bring the pollen for pollination. Mass selection using selfing is of limited interest because of the inbreeding depression, which can induce a depression up to 30% on the yield. The method consists of crossing a coconut tree with itself. Nevertheless, it can be interesting if the coconut tree has very special characteristics, for example sweet husk, or to reproduce certain compact dwarfs. In the framework of the CIDP project, led it by SPC, we created seven data sheets or forms for recording all the requested information for efficient selection of parent palms. First is about farmers and farms. Second, palm localization. Three, palm characterization. Four, and five, two methods for mature fruits analysis. Six, tender nut analysis. Seven, nursery test for discarding hybrids. Both the relevant Excel file and the seven individual data sheets are available online for download on the website replantcoconut.blogspot.com. We saw that in the case of the coconut palm, the term hybrid is defined in its widest sense as the result of a cross between population, families, or individual palms belonging to different varieties. Hybrids are not foreign varieties, imported, and unsuited to local conditions. Hybrids are mostly made by crossing two varieties that have been present in the country for hundreds of years or more. It's easy to teach farmers how to create hybrids from varieties already present in their fields and gardens. It can be a juicy business to produce and sell hybrid seed nuts, in particular in countries where official agricultural services produce few or no hybrids. Imagine you succeed to find the most performant coconut hybrids, which is quite difficult in the Pacific region. If you plant them, and forgot them, leaving them alone with Mother Nature, without caring for them, and without bringing them any kind of fertilizers, and picking up all the nuts, husk and leaves, these hybrids will only produce well for the first 15 to 20 years. Then your soil will probably be depleted, emptied of its mineral and organic elements. Hybrids are very powerful varieties, able to draw large amounts of mineral elements from the soil to ensure high production. Hybrids could be compared to luxury cars. Can you hope that a luxury car consumes as little fuel as the smaller ordinary car model? There is a special age when hybrids are more fragile than tall type coconut trees. This usually occurs between four and seven years after planting. At this age the hybrids, if well planted, are already covered with hundreds of fruits. Their root system is not completely implanted. At five to six years, most of tall type coconut palms produces only large stem and leaves. They bear no or only a few fruits. If you are really unlucky and if a cyclone or a very severe drought occurs just during this period, the hybrids will suffer more than the talls. Some hybrids may even die while the tall type will survive. Since hybrids produce much more, it's worth planting hybrids. The best is to grow different kinds of varieties in your coconut plantation. This will spread the risk of hazards. It will allow you to make your own ideas about your varietal preference. Do you want to enter and participate in modern agriculture? Or do you want to continue only traditional picking?
Dear participants and colleagues, thank you for listening.